Welcome back. you here with Goldberg. Today we're going to be talking about David and Rachel Hollis. For those of you who don't know, they are a very empowered and progressive media couple, which is probably why you've never heard of them. And he used to be a multi-million dollar sales exec at Disney. She worked for Meyer Max. Then a couple of years back, they chose to quit and form the Hollis Company, which deals with relationship wellness, overcoming obstacles when raising children, and the struggles of marriage, which is kind of interesting because what happened to their own union. So that's what we'll discuss here. Um, and that will happen uh, uh, Are you Black buffering? Coffee. You can't even shut off your volume? I didn't know what happened. I mean, the quality of our video. Sorry. Hey guys, I'm Rachel. I'm Dave. Oh, hi <laughs> Dave. Set that up well. well. Yeah, it's fine. Um, we thought that we would tell you a little bit about um, us. Our marriage. You watch us in videos, and so... What is this about? Yeah, he doesn't even Our know. Our marriage. Yes. Great. How long have we been married? 42 years? 13 years still. 13 years. But we've been together for 15 years. 15 years. Keeps getting better. Every yeah. year's been better. I don't believe that. It is real. Dave worked at... Still works at Disney, and I worked at Miramax, which was owned by Disney at the time. He came over for a meeting one day, and I went to get him from the lobby... And his back was to me, his hands were in his pockets, and he turned around. Oh, what a handsome guy. Are those glasses Cope? Uh, Do you even remember this moment? No. 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 Why would I remember this yeah, he moment? He doesn't want it. He wants well, to forget. I remember it, and I knew. I didn't know what, but I knew, like, oh, yeah. something just happened. It's funny, because it started very professionally. Yeah. And then slowly you could yeah. see just like a little crack where it was like, oh, wait, that's a joke. Yeah. Oh, you're being funny. Yeah. And then a little more of a joke. And, and the next joke was your marriage. Lyrics back and forth. And then we started like, but the, like the, the climb, not like Miley Cyrus, but like the, the climb that took place to, uh, you know, it going from being totally professional to not professional yeah. is something that happened. Um, and it happened pretty quickly, but it, it happened. The key to our long marriage, uh, joint property laws in the state of California. Uh, yeah, we got some honesty there. That's about property laws. I think we're, we are deliberate. We're intentional. We do take seriously the work that is required to make a marriage great. And Absolutely. It, you know, like we go on dates yeah. once a week, every week, even if we don't want to, even if we don't like each other as much that yeah. week, even if we're tired or have trap. You know, notice how they kind of treat the relationship and the marriage as this abstract thing. This video strikes me as very insincere. Maybe I'm just jaded, but uh, you're going to see as we go on over time how things change. And it's quite sad, but they've got a lot of great content in this particular piece, so just bear with me. We'll cycle ahead over here. Or more, but feels held back by a partner who isn't making that move. Make your move. Change, change Make yourself. your change. Change yourself, and then watch this person follow you. Because I'm and not change yourself. Like, look at me. I'm changing, but just do your thing. Yeah. Do your own thing. Don't even talk to them. I mean, obviously, talk to them. But like, yeah, don't talk to them. That's good for a relationship. Don't, because I think some people hear that and they use it as a thing to like dangle over their partner's yeah. head. When the reality is, you if you just start to change yourself, and someone is watching you do it, unless they're Garbage. Oh, was Dave garbage? Uh, was Dave garbage? Change as well. Yep. Going back to what we first talked about, this idea of like pursuing your spouse or dating your wife or having some frequency of going out and having totally bedroom flavor. Oh man, I'm gonna go with it for a second. Um, but like, <laughs> I know, I know. What yeah, she's talking world? like they don't even have but sex. The like the pursuit for a better version of ourself. Like Rachel has been this awesome ambassador of reaching for more and that has created me on that i don't care we commit yeah. to that yeah. too yeah. I mean, that's like, also a chapter in girl wash your face if you want the details feel free to buy that book and read the whole chapter yeah in the so this is they were just promoting their rise together conference they did these seminars where like couples could go and you know deal with your most troubling challenges as partners and she's promoting her book, which is all very important. This is February of 2018. Now we're going to cycle forward just to give you some sense. We are in uh, March of 2020, so uh, uh, almost March, like two years later. We were 
talking about an episode that we did about 18 months ago, which was the State of the Union on your relationship, and here's the gist. Or do we have a clip we can play? Hey guys, I want to make sure that I am creating content that is exactly what you want to hear. So I don't want to hear anything, uh, but it's interesting, exactly what you want to hear. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that if you uh, are getting a message you want to hear, if you're someone who's in a relationship or might be considering marriage, you might consider buying one of her books. Look at that, 5,000 reviews. This other one has like 18,000. Girl, stop apologizing. Girl, wash your face. Maybe the new one could be, girl, just get divorced. Eh. And look, even Dave has a book. I read this recently. It's how I found out about these people. And his doesn't have as many reviews, but he's obviously sold a few. He talks about how he's struggling, they became a better dad, and his wife likes to slap him on the ass as though to say, we're going to have sex later because you're a great dad. So, you know, you always need to look at the motivations of people. Will you tell me which part of this video is your absolute favorite? When Comment it was over. And tell me, did something make you laugh? Did something make you cry? Did something super motivate you or light a fire under your butt? Light a fire under your butt. I'm um, so down to earth. Nothing at all. Uh, let me know down below and make sure you tell me what minute it happened at so that I can create around that exact thing. Thanks, guys. Play us that clip. Really the idea of a question that we feel like everybody in a romantic relationship needs to ask themselves and needs to ask themselves pretty regularly, which is, are we growing? Are we growing together? Are we growing more in love? Are we better off now than we were a year ago? Or are we dying? Because... Well, I mean, technically, I hate to be that person, but human beings are always growing and dying just sort of in a slow motion, depending on how you look at things. So, yeah. Because any living thing is one of those two things. You can't be in the middle. You can't. You're either growing or you're dying. An animal, oh, you guys could be a grass, test tube. Humans are either growing or they're dying. So, what does your relationship look like right now? And well, I have a relationship, which is more than I can say for you. So, just that. The way that I think you can answer this question: Are we growing? Are we dying? Are we stagnant? Do we feel stuck? Do we feel like we can't get past this place? Or do we feel like we sort of are repeating ourselves? Is, are you more in love with your partner than you were a year ago? Woo! Listen to this. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. I feel like I just listened to myself in seventh grade. Like, my voice is like, oh, this is before you went through puberty. You've become a woman. I've become a woman. Finally. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt here. Eh, uh, kind of racist. I'm so glad. Also, we recorded that on the floor of our... I know. ...closet. It's so funny. I, like, flash back to... You know, there's even less sincerity in this video, and you can just tell the presentation that they're just drained and almost uninterested to be there. They're doing it because they have to keep the business going, as we're going to see. Being on the floor of the closet. Such a weird thing. It's such a weird thing. It feels like if you, if you go back 18 months in our relationship, I think... Oh, so an interesting thing is that you, we, cannot talk about our relationship today without talking about the business. There it is. Because the, the business. business is like this third part of our relationship. There's me, there's Dave, there's the Hollis Company. And it is such a massive part of our life. And because so much of our life now is wrapped up in taking care of the business, growing the business, scaling the business, leading this team, it's become this like... Like, what is it called, Paul? What is it called when a couple, there's like three people in a couple? Polyamorous. Polyamorous. Which is what I thought, but then I thought I was making up that term. I was going to say a recipe for an affair leading to divorce, but continue. <laughs> oh, foreshadowing. Dave knows what's up. So, I, I don't know exactly what to make of these people. They strike me, as I, as I said, very insincere. Um, what's sad, though, this again, March 2020, right as he released his own book, and in June of uh, June 10th, 2020, I believe, is when it came out that they were having a divorce. They were getting a divorce. Now, you could say, well, maybe in April or May it all came crashing down, no, no judgment. But it's interesting, over here, Dave Hollis says he and Rachel were considering divorce for years. So you really have to ask the question, 
was this not planned? Were they releasing the content still to generate money as sort of a lead up to the divorce? Because, you know, at Disney, he was supposedly making millions of dollars. Maybe they weren't making quite as much selling books. Who knows? But this is why, you know, you've always got to call things into question. There are so many people trying to put the whole, we've got a, such a great family, we're so united in love, and it's BS. Politicians do that, certainly. Uh, religious leaders. I mean, how many of you really believe that Jerry Falwell is faithful to his wife? I don't think most do, because when you get to that point where you're putting that sort of stuff on the internet publicly on your own account, you're basically saying, look, I'm so rich, I'm so powerful, I'm essentially untouchable. And it's quite disgraceful when you're trying to run a school with all these standards of moral purity. So when you look at these folks and you say, okay, you started a whole business around your family and your marriage, and you probably knew a couple of years back it wasn't working out, but you had to put it forward, you know, just in order to have, a, have revenue. And maybe I'm wrong. I'm not, this is just my opinion. I'm not saying it's fact, but you really just stop and you're like, this is sad. It's sad when people are so possessed by the need to generate revenue that there isn't a, a position where they stop and say, okay, you know what, we're not going to weaponize our family in this way. And if we know that union's not going to work, we're not going to lead other people down that road because there are probably people who got married taking their advice, thinking, oh, it's going to work out. And all of a sudden you realize it was very much a sham. And so, you know, I'm not a, a totally jaded when it comes to unions and marriages, but I think these people are a good example of how you don't want it to be. Don't put on a, a false image. If you're not happy, walk away. Don't just stick there because, well, we've got to put up a united front for the cameras.